يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزاري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف في this section شباب باب اللامات وأحكام متفرقة which means the section of the lambs and uh, separate rules the first line in this وفخم اللاما من اسم الله عن فتح نوضا من كعبد الله the summary is so when you have the, the uh, word Allah or اللهم you make it light when there is a kasra before it and you make it heavy when there's fatha or dhamma. That's the summary of this line, right? <coughs> when there's a fatha or dhamma before the lam in the word Allah or Allahumma, you make it heavy. Why I'm saying uh, before the lam, not before the word Allah, no, before the lam in the word Allah. Because the word Allah itself, how do you read it? Do you say Allah, Allahu Akbar or Allahu Akbar? Allah. Why are we making it here, here heavy? Because the lamb in this word Allah, right? The lamb here. Which lamb are we talking about? This lamb or this lamb? Both. This one, right? Why? Because this one is shamsiya, it's silent, right? This lamb, this lamb that we're talking about, when you see this lamb, or when this lamb is preceded by kasra, then we make this lamb light. Consequently, the alif, which is here, will be light, right? Like this, millah, bismillahi, right? Qulillahumma, right? But if this lamb is preceded by fatha or dhamma, we make it heavy. Like this word Allah, the word Allah, we say ah, so this lamb is preceded by what? Fatha, so we say al, huh? Al, the hamza is light, it has fatha, the lamb is heavy because it's preceded by fatha, right? We say Allahu, Allahu. If we have dhamma, by qalu, qalu Allahumma, for example. Right? Ka lul. You jump to this lamb. This is silent. This is a drug. This is not pronounced. This is drug to avoid the two consecutive sequences. We explain this in details, right? So here, ka lul. See, this lamb is, is lamb. And this is a lamb. But this lamb is light. Why? Why this lamb is light? Because we said the lamb in every word in Arabic, in the in Hafs narration, every lamb is light, except the lamb in the word Allah or Allahumma. It will be light only if it's preceded by a letter with kasra. So this lamb is light. See, qalu. Say qalu. Now we're gonna move to the heavy lamb. Qalu Allahumma. Qalu Allahumma That's the summary of the previous classes about this line وَفَخِّمِ اللَّامَ مِنِ اسْمِ اللَّهِ عَنْ فَتْحِ نَوْضًا مِنْ كَعَبْدُ اللَّهِ That was line 44. Now we move to line 45. He, رحمه الله, continues in these separate rules and he says وحرف الاستعلاء فخم وخصوصا لطباق أقوى نحو قال والعصا This is again about تفخيم and ترقيق Making the letters heavy and making the letters light And this, this topic really distinguishes the skillful reciters from the normal reciters Okay 
if you want to know really that this reciter is skillful, you need to see is he giving every letter its right in 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 regard with the sifa. If this letter is uh, is ha is uh, heavy, is he making it heavy? And especially when we have a heavy letter followed by light letter followed by heavy letter, in these types of words, you know that really you have achieved this uh, level of skillfulness or not. Now, we explained earlier about the rulings of learning tajweed that, excuse me, there are some sifat that are obligatory on the Muslim to learn. And some sifat, some sifat they're not obligatory because they do not change the meaning. Okay? Of course, the Muslim should learn the Quran and to recite the Quran as, as it was revealed to our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the main part is that, the, you, that you learn the sifat that might change the meaning. And tafkhim and tarqiq might change the meaning in many letters. Example, if you say, qala li sahibihi, sa, the sa is heavy, right? If you don't make it heavy and you make it sa, qala li sahibihi, li sa, you change the meaning. So here it's obligatory you make the sa heavy. Because if you don't make it heavy, it will turn to another letter, a different word now. Same thing, walabba, walabba. It is waladallin. You have to make it heavy. If you make it walad da, that's not da, that's dal. Da da, that's dal, not da. That's heavy dal. Heavy dal. In Arabic, we don't have heavy dal. Da da, no. Walabba, walabba. Tamam? Now, istala, we explained istala before. <coughs> we explained itbaq before when we talked about the attributes of the letters. Now he is mentioning the specific letters that should be heavier than other letters. He says, وَحَرْفَ الْإِسْتِعْلَاءِ فَخِّمْ وَخْصُصَ لِطْبَاقَ أَقْوَى نَحْوُ قَالَ وَالْعَصَى وَحَرْفَ الْإِسْتِعْلَاءِ what does the harf al-istilai mean? Heavy letters. The heavy letter or the istila letter to be more specific. What does the istila mean? Heavy. You remember when we explained the sifat of the harf? We said istila means the sound of the exactly the sound go to the top. The, the roof. sound go going up to the roof of the mouth. The sound of the letter goes up to the roof of the mouth. When the sound of the letter goes up to the roof of the mouth, that makes the letter heavy. And this is why he said, فَرَقِّقًا مُسْتَفِلًا مِنْ أَحْرُفِي فَرَقِّقًا مُسْتَفِلًا مِنْ أَحْرُفِي وَحَاذِرًا تَفْخِيمَ لَفْضِ الْأَلِفِي We explained this before, right? فَرَقِّقًا مُسْتَفِلًا مِنْ أَحْرُفِي Opposite of istila is what? Istifad. So there he told you, make the istifal letters, make them light. So this means the istila letters should be heavy. Tamam? وحرف الاستعلاء So what is the result of istila? Tafkheem. They call it also mustahaq. Mustahaq. من كل صفة ومستحقها. You have to give the letter its right in regard with its makhraj, in regard with its sifa. And the sifa, the, the, the sifa that is uh, uh, natural or the sifa that uh, is connected with the letter all the time or the sifa that is accidental and the sifa that is uh, because of the of the nature of the letter or the sifa because of something else so the sifa and the result of the sifa as well all of the sifat of the, of the letter and all of the, the results of those sifat like istila this is why he said وَحَرْفَ الْإِسْتِعْلَاءِ فَخِّمْ Means what? Make the istila letter heavy. What are the istila letters? خُصَّ ضَغْطٍ قِضْ Right? He mentioned them before. وَسَبْعُ عُلْوٍ خُصَّ ضَغْطٍ قِضْ حَصَرٍ 
right? Who remembers the first part of the line? وَبَيْنَ رِخْوٍ وَالشَّدِيدِ لِنْ عُمَرٍ وَبَيْنَ رِخْوٍ وَالشَّدِيدِ لِنْ عُمَرٍ وَسَبْعُ عُلْوٍ خُصَّ ضَغْطٍ قِذْ حَصَرٍ So now we know وحرف الاستعلاء فخم خص ضغط قض these seven letters خص ضغط قض these seven letters we always have to make them heavy and none of these seven letters خا صاد ضاد غين طا قاف ضاء none of them is in in English none of them is in English so you have to pay to pay extra attention to them especially if your mother tongue is not Arabic. وحرف الاستعلاء يفخم by making it heavy and we mentioned in a previous class that we have how many levels of تفخيم five levels you remember we have five levels of تفخيم excuse me before I go to the levels of تفخيم let me remind you of another thing that we covered before that we said the Arabic letters in regard with tafkhim and tarqiq are how many categories? Two. Three. <laughs> <laughs> how many? Three. Three. We have letters that are always heavy. What are they? Harf al istilai. The istila letter. Always heavy. And we have letters that are sometimes heavy, sometimes light. What are they? Alif, Alif, Lam, Alif, Lam, Ra. Come on, guys, we need to study. Alif, Lam, Ra. Alif, Lam, Ra. These are three letters. Are sometimes heavy, sometimes light. Alif, Lam, Ra. And the last category is what? The rest of the letters are always light. تمام. We explained this before. Now, even those letters that are always heavy, we have levels of heaviness. Or the letters that are sometimes heavy, sometimes light. When they are heavy, we have five levels of heaviness. Who can remind us of those five levels? The first level, when we have the istila letter, having fatha, followed by alif. So we say kha, say kha, sa. ضا ط ق غا ظا تمام these letters are all this is the heaviest level you see because you're having a lot of space a lot of خا خا now the second level when the استعلاء letter has فتحة but not followed by ألف خا صا ضا ض غا ط ق ظا third level when the استعلاء letter has ضمة خو صو ضو غو طو قو ظو fourth level when the استعلاء letter has سكون right إخ إخ إص إص إض إض إل 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 إطو إل إل إطو تمام؟ last level is when the استعلاء letter has كسرة even though the استعلاء letter has كسرة still it is heavy but it is in the least level of heaviness we say خي normal خي we don't say خي خي as some students do خي خيفة no normal خي صي ضي غي غي طي قي so we don't make it كي 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 no قي and we don't say قي قي no قي normal قي ضي طي غي غي تمام these are the levels of heaviness. This was a review uh, for these levels. Now he says, <coughs> We understand, we make the istila letter heavy, and we know that there are levels of heaviness. 
بخصوصا means specify بخصوصا means specify بخصوصا originally it is بخصوصا and this noon is called in Arabic noon التوكيد الخفيفة the light noon of emphasis means make sure you specify what the itbaq means the itbaq letters aqwa aqwa means stronger means making them stronger in what? in heaviness nahwu means like قال and العصا قال is an example of the word that has استعلاء letter which is, which is what? the قاف العصا is an example of the a word that has استعلاء letter which is at the same time اطباق letter so he's telling you if you have استعلاء letter that is اطباق letter at the same time you make it even heavier than the normal استعلاء letters why? we will see now why because these مطبق letters which, is, which are what? what are the اطباق letters? وصاد ضاد طاء ضاء مطبقة وفر من لب الحروف المذلقة he said رحمه الله وصاد ضاد طاء ضاء مطبقة these are the four letters that are اطباق letters what is the اطباق the imprisonment or the confinement of the sound between the roof between the, the tongue and the roof of the mouth أص أض أط أض notice in these four letters أص أط أض 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 notice that the sound is confined between the roof and the and the tongue and that makes them that makes them heavier see which is heavier قا قا or صا قا صا صا right ضا ضا طا because there is a smaller space and the, the, the sound is confined more than the uh, other استعلاق letters which are the انفتاح letters okay or the منفتح letters وحرف الاستعلاء يفخم وخصوصا now why he said وخصوصا it's originally وخصوصا because the Arabs when they stop on the verbs when they stop on the verbs that has noon التوكيد الخفيفة they turn it into alif so they don't when they stop they don't say وخصوصا what do they say وخصوصا if I want to say if I want to tell someone قيفان means stand and I want to put some emphasis I say قيفا so when you stop on the, the verb that has noon التوكيد you turn it into alif okay and here because he's stopping and uh, he uh, turned it into alif and also for the, the rhyme to, to suit uh, so I mentioned this here وخصوصاً we stop on it so أخصوصا is originally أخصوصاً with the light noon of emphasis the Arabs stop on a verb that has noon التوكيد الخفيفة the light noon of emphasis after a فتحة by changing it into an alif so when there's noon التوكيد followed by or preceded by فتحة and you want to stop on it you stop on it by dropping the noon and uh, replacing it with فتحة with alif right in the Quran, we have two words that are similar to this. We will come to them maybe later, but it's good to mention them here since we have a similar word. In Surah Al-Alaq, we have لَنَسْفَعَنْ And in Surah uh, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, we have لَيَكُونَا These two words, originally this here, there's no tawkil khafifa. <coughs> okay? But when you stop on them, you change the noon into alif. So here they, uh, they were, these words were written in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu in his presence. They were written this way. Okay? They were written this way because uh, it's an indication that when you stop on them, 
you stop on them with alif. So how do you stop on lanasfa'an? Lanasfa'a. How do you stop on layakunan? Layakuna. It's better to connect, of course, but if you're out of breath or you're testing someone and you wanted him to stop here, this is how you stop. Then you go back and you connect. Okay. وحرف الاستعلاء فخم وخصوصا means specify لطباق specify الاطباق What does he mean here? The letters of الاطباق Right? Which are what? صاد طابا أقوى stronger means means making them stronger in heaviness And he gave you two examples The first example is استعلاء letter that is not مطبق What's the opposite of إطباق انفتاح So the opposite of مطبق is منفتح مطبق منفتح العصا it has the صاد which is استعلاء letter that is مطبق but the قاف is منفتح which is heavier صاد صاد تمام uh, Insha'Allah, we will take a short break for Salah and we'll come back to explain uh, to finish up this line, Insha'Allah, and do one more line and we'll be done, Insha'Allah. No. <laughs> Any question on this, Shabab? <laughs> He gave us here an example about the istala letter that is not mutbah, which is the qaf, and the istala letter that is mutbah, which is the sad. So the the sad here, the sad is heavier than the qaf. Tamam? He gave for the normal istala letter and the itbaq, istala itbaq letter. Tamam? Now, inshallah, with the, uh, the rest of the explanation, it will be even clearer, inshallah. Uh, we continue, inshallah. With the uh, with this line, so based on that, we understand that we have uh, two groups of the istila letters, right? We have istila letters that are itbaq letters also, and we have istila letters that are infitah letters, right? So we have musta'liya, musta'liya means means letters that are uh, musta'liya that have istila, musta'liya mutbaqa, right? As you see here in the in the uh, uh, screen, Mustaliya Mutbaka. It has istala and it has itbaq. What are those letters? Don't look at the screen, look at me. What are those letters? Sad, ba, ta, va. These are istala letters and itbaq letters. Right? These are the only four itbaq letters and they are istala letters. <coughs> the other group is what? Istala letters. But it has infitah. Mustaliya munfatiha. Mustaliya munfatiha. And uh, of course, in this category, we have the remaining three letters: the kha and the ghain and the dad. Uh, no, no, not the dad. The kha and the ghain and the qaf. Tamam. So the the istala itbaq letter is heavier than the istala infitah letter. You're not gonna do something here special. No. Naturally, it will be heavier because of the itbaq. Naturally, it will be heavier. Okay. Now, why we said why are the itbaq letters are heavier than the infitah letters, the istila letters that are mutbaqa? Why it's heavier than the istila letters that are munfatiha? Because the istila letters that have itbaq, they have two attributes of strength. It has sifata quwa. The sad and the dad and the ta and the va. They have two strong attributes. The first one is the istila, which makes them heavy, and the itbaq, which even makes them heavier. But the, the other group is only munfatiha. It's only musta'liya and it's munfatiha. It doesn't have, it has, it has only uh, one uh, attribute of strength. Tama? So, uh, Sheikh Ayman Suede, may Allah reward him, uh, this is from his, his uh, show. Dhamir, uh, for example, Dhamir is heavier than Ghalib. Why, uh, Kinan? 
why damir is heavier than ghalib? Because see, da, try it, da, ga, da. You see the da, it has more echo, more heaviness, right? Da, ga. So why is the da heavier than ga? Because the ba has itba and istila, but the gain is, has only istila. Okay, it doesn't have itba. Same thing, tur, tur. It's heavier than qu, qumu, right? Tur is heavier than qumu, right? The same reason. This is the whole line. So وحرف الاستعلاء فخم وخصوصا لطباقة أقوى نحو قال والعصا. Now. Uh, we have some points <coughs> about the wording of this line that you need to know as advanced students and as inshallah students who are going to be teachers and going to teach people you need to know these these things uh, in regard with the wordings of, of uh, this line first one first point and this also benefit us in the reading of the Quran as I will show you now inshallah First one, وحرف الاستعلاء. See what we said. وحرف لس. We did not say وحرف الاستعلاء. What did we say? وحرف لس. What, what did we do here? Let me explain this to you here on the screen, inshallah, on the on the board. So he said حرف حرف. This Hamza, what is this Hamza, Shabab? Anyone has an idea? This Hamza, Hamza, Twasil. Because Sta'la, Sta'la, Sta'la. Okay, this is Madi Khumasi. So this is the Masdar of the Madi Khumasi, the, the verb that has five letters. Is ta la even sudasi. This hamza is hamza wasl. What about this? What about this? Hamza wasl. Again, hamza wasl, right? What is this is al, right? You know al, which means what in English? The the right. So this al is composed of what? Of hamza wasl and the lamb of al tarif, right? Now we want to connect. If I just want, if I just want to read this word, what do I say? I say. <laughs> if I want to just read this word, what do I say? Alistala. Alistala. Why I don't say alistala? When do we use this Hamza, Shabab? Hamza Wassal, when do we use it? When we want to start a letter that starts with? Sukun. Sukun. So the Arabs, they use Hamza Wassal, why? To help them start the words that start with Sukun. Right? Now, I have Al, right? Hamza Wassal, now I'm connecting it with something before it. So when we connect Hamzat Wasl with anything before it, do we need it anymore? We don't need it, so we drop it. Tamam? We explained this earlier in many examples, if you remember. When you connect Hamzat Wasl with anything before it, you drop it, because you don't need it anymore, right? If we say, uh, let's say, this simple great word that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu the first word, how do you read it? Iqra. Iqra. Okay, if I want to say with wow here, how do you read these two words? How do you read it now? Waqra. Huh? You drop him that wasn't. Right? So because we don't need it anymore, we have something to help us start this qaf that has sukun. Right? Here, same thing. Now, what do you notice we have? I want to read this word, right? Now forget about this. Now I want to read this word. I dropped them that wasl. Tamam? Now what's left? Alis. Alis ta'la. Do we say alis ta'la? What do you see? It's very clear. What do we have? 
Two consecutive sukuns. And we said in Arabic, we cannot have two consecutive sukuns within the word. Right? You remember? And what do you do? I gave you a rule about this. Change. What's the rule I gave you? Change. Don't change right away. Oh, first you have to check. We look at the letter <coughs> of the first sukun. If it's a weak letter, means a mad letter, a or u or e, we drop it. But if it's not a weak letter, we change, in most of the cases, we change that sukun into kasra. So what do we say? A listala. Tamam? A listala. Tamam, shabab? Is this clear? A listala. This is how you read this word. You say al istila, al istighfar. Tamam? Now here there is another way. And, and an example of this in the Quran. I'm gonna come back to how you read this with this. Okay? But let's focus on this now. There's another word. Uh, there's in the Quran there are some examples like this. We have the word uh, in Surah Al-Hujurat, al ism Right? Salismu, we're gonna come back to this also. Is this clear? This word is clear, Shari? Uh, okay. Bi salismu, right? Same thing. How do you start this word? If you wanna read this word, how do you read it? Al ism. We say al ism. Al ism. What do you say? Al ism. Al Exactly same. Al istila. Al ism. صح؟ why same thing exactly we drop همزة الوصل and then we change this into كسرة right now there's another way to start these types of words <coughs> what is the way it's very simple that way is just you drop همزة الوصل in the beginning as well you drop also this همزة الوصل why who knows why who knows why? Because this Hamzat Wasl, what do we use it for? To connect. To help us start the words that start with Sukoon. Right? We, because, but this Lam has had Sukoon. Now it doesn't have Sukoon anymore. So we don't need it anymore. So we just say, what do we say? Lismu. Lismu. What do we say here? Listila. Tamam shabab. Is that clear? So, two ways to read this word. Two ways. Alism or listen. Alistila or listila. Is that clear? Tamam. Now, how do we connect? When we connect, do we have the option of keeping this Hamzat Wasal? When we connect, do we have the option of keeping Hamzat Wasal if we connect no. it? No. We don't have that option. So, how do you read it then? Harfa Listila. Ah. Harfa Listila'i. Here, how do you read it? Bi'sa Li. Bi'sa Lismul. Shaykh Abdullah Jazakallah Khair. Tamam. How is this different from Al Insan? Al insan, that hamza is called hamza qata. It's not additional, it's original hamza. That's al i. Tamam? Al insan. This hamza is hamza qata. And how do you know this hamza qata or hamza wasl? It has rules, but in the Quran, you know very easily how. I told you before, this is the symbol of hamza wasl. When you see this in the Quran, this is hamza wasl. No. Hamza Tawassal is not original. But this Hamza is original. Yeah, but the Wassal is not. The Wassal is not. And the proof is, we drop it when we connect it with anything before it, and still we know the meaning. Right? Right? So, got it? Got the difference? How, to, how do you distinguish between them in the Quran? Only by writing. But just you see this, you know this is Hamzat Wasl. Tamam? Now we will come back to Hamzat Wasl in Al Jazariya. We have a section about Hamzat Wasl later on. 
but this will be more than enough for us for now, inshallah. Uh, anything else? Anything else about this? So now when we connect, we say harf al bi salismu. Tamam? Uh, another example here we have in the Quran, we have, look here on the screen please, we have inim ru'un. This originally has sukun, this noon is originally sakina. Okay? So, in order to avoid the two sukuns here, we made it with kasra. We say, inim ru'un. Inim ru'un. Here, inim ra'atun. Inim ra'atun. Tamam? Tamam, Hadi? Yeah. How do you start this word? We say, im ru'un. How do you start this word? We say, im ra'atun. Im ra'atun. But when you connect, you drop hamzat wasl. And you change the sukun of the noon into kasra. To avoid the two consecutive sukuns, inim ru'un, inim ra'atun. Tamam, shabab? So, now you know why we read it like this? Waharfa lis. Is that clear? Waharfa lis ti'la ifakhim. Waqsusa, we said this is uh, originally noon, and he put it on the alif because we, when we stop on it, we stop on alif, and that helped him, helped him also to uh, rhyme this line. Uh, now, the last point here is this word. How do you read this word? He said, we read it this way. وَحَرْفَ لِسْتِعْلَاءِ فَخِّمْ وَخْصُصَ لِطْبَاقَ لِطْبَاقَ أَقْوَى نَحْوُ قَالَ وَالْعَصَى Why we do this? Why we say لِطْبَاقَ Huh? Is the word al similar to the word al Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, yes. But in reality, they're different. What's the difference? The word al ya shabab, this is hamzat qata. This word is like this al Why? Because the, the verb is atbaqa. Atbaqa. If you if we add wow here to the verb atbaqa, do we say watbaqa? Or wa atbaqa? Wa atbaqa. This is original hamza. It's hamza qata. So here we ha we say al itbaq. Al itbaq. But why he said he dropped the hamza and he and we read it waqsusa lito. As if it is the stala. Because of the rhyme. For the necessity of the rhyme. He treated this word just like the word al -istila. And that's permissible in the poetry. In poetry it's okay because he wanted to be rhythmic. Why? So that the students will sing it. And will be easy for them to memorize. al but if you say وحرف الاستعلاء فخم وخصوصا الإطباق أقوى نحو قال you see it broken تمام these are the points we we wanted by this inshallah we uh, understand this line with all of its uh, details and all of the Arabic points in it so uh, apply the تفخيم to the استعلاء letter and specify the إطباق letter making them even stronger in تفخيم as in قال and العصا uh, this word al istala we said it has a definition, etc. We explained this. We changed the sukun and al into kasra to get rid of the two consecutive sukuns. We explained this and we explained this. The Arabs stop on a verb that has noon tawqil khafifa. Okay, we said this. We said waqsusan. When we have noon tawqil khafifa preceded by fatha and we stop on it, we change it into fat into alif. Al itbaq, it is originally al itbaq, he applied it just for the rhyme, even though that's not Hamzat Wasl. We explained in earlier verses the <coughs> concepts of istila and itbaq and tafkhim, and we also studied that tafkhim is the mustahaq, which means the result of istila, and that tafkhim has five levels. We explained all that. And now we move to the 46th line. 46th line of Al-Jazari, insha'Allah. Imam Ibn Jazari says, Rahimahullah, وَبَيِّنِ الْإِطْبَاقَ مِنْ أَحَطُّ مَا بَسَطَّ وَالْخُلْفُ بِنَخْلُكُمْ وَقَعْ وَبَيِّنِ الْإِطْبَاقَ مِنْ أَحَطُّ مَا 
بسطت والخلف بنخلكم وقع what does that mean بين means what this is the line uh, 46 بين means what يا شباب show show clarify make it clear تمام make it clear الاطباق we know what الاطباق means right what does الاطباق mean confinement of the sound between the you see how much we're repeating we're repeating a lot of concepts even if you were not there in the beginning of the course inshallah you can follow up with us you can follow with us الاطباق is the confinement of the sound between the roof the tongue and the roof of the mouth and how many اطباق letters we have four وصاد وضاد طاء وضاء مطبقة وفر من لب الحروف المذلقة Clarify the itbaq Min The itbaq Min means of Or in Ahat to How do we How do we Do we apply the itbaq to the whole word Or to only a letter In the word One letter So clarify the itbaq means what Clarify The itbaq in the letter of itbaq which is what in this word the ta tamam clarify the itbaq of the ta in ahattu ahattu ma basatta with basatta means also clarify the itbaq letter in the word basatta basatta which is the ta again is this line clear? Now we will come to the details how to read these words and what does that mean. But now we read, we're trying to get the general meaning. وَالْخُلْفُ بِنَخْلُكُمْ وَقَعْ The difference in the word نَخْلُكُمْ وقع means has occurred. What does that mean? والخلف بنخلكم وقع means the difference in pronouncing the word نخلكم has occurred between the قراء or the scholars of قراءة. There's a difference of opinion how to read it. Now we'll come to the details إن شاء الله. So here we should apply إدغام متجانس ناقص. Here he's telling you وبين الإطباق. Clarify the itbaq. Right? Uh, come back to me, uh, Sharif, please. وَبَيِّنِ الْإِطْبَاقَ مِنْ أَحَطُّ مَا بَسَطَّ وَالْخُلْفُ بِنَخْلُقْكُمْ وَقَعْ We have here to apply something called إِدْغَام متجانس. إِدْغَام متجانس. What does idram mean first? Idram means merging or assimilation. Okay? When do we apply idram? If we have a letter that has sukun followed by a letter that has haraka, in certain cases we make idram. What do we do? We merge the first into the second. So they become one stressed letter. This is the general vast definition of idram, right? Dropping the first, which is the sakin, and stressing the second, which is متحرك <laughs> has haraka. Dropping the first, which has sukun, stressing the second, which has haraka. So it will be stressed. It will be with shadda. Who can remind me of idram of this type under this definition of the idrams that we studied? We have idram with gunna. Idram without gunna. We have idram shafawi. Right? When you say may يعمل, you're dropping the noon, stressing the ya. When you say mir rabbihim, mir rabbihim, you're dropping the noon, you're stressing the ra. When you say lahum, you're dropping the first meme, stressing the second. Tama? Now we have other types of idram. We have different categorizations of idram. This one that we are concerned about here is. The idram, when we have letters that, uh, the idram in relation with the letters, what does that mean? Sometimes we have one letter that has sukun, followed by the exact same letter. 
That's called idgham mutamathi. We're going to study it in the next section, inshallah. Or in this section, actually. So when we have a letter followed by the same letter, we have idgham mutamathi, similar. When we have a letter that's followed by a letter that comes from the same makhraj, but they're different. They're different in their sifat. They come from the same makhraj, but they're different in their sifat. That's idgham muta janis. The third case or third type, we're going to study this later in details, is called idgham muta qarib. When we have a, a letter that's followed by another letter, they come from neighboring makhraj, from makhraj that are close to each other. And this applies to the word nakhlukkum. Okay? Now let's come to the first type. Idgham mutajanis. What does that mean? We have a letter with sukun, followed by the a letter that comes from the same makhraj. What do we do? We make idgham mutajanis. Generally, generally according to the general definition of idgham, what do we do? Drop the first. Always when you have the word idgham, you drop the first. Stress. You stress the second. But that is the general type of idram. There is another type of idram which is called idram naqis. Incomplete idram. So we have idram tam, tam or kamil or complete idram. And we have incomplete idram. So this categorization of idram is concerned with what? With the way you apply the idram. It's not like mutajanis, mutaqar. Now, we're talking about the two categories or two types of idram in regard with what? In regard with the way you apply the idram. Do you drop the first completely and stress the second? Or you do incomplete idram? This is what we're going to talk about. In this, in this line, he's talking about the incomplete idram. Before we move to this, who can tell me, who can give me an example of a complete idram? Yalla, I've just mentioned some of them. <laughs> Quick, may yamal, ah, mir rabbihim, qala taifa. Look at this example here on the screen. Qala taifa. You see it? Does the ta and the ta, do the ta and the ta come from the same makhraj? Yes. What did we do? Look how we read it. We read it this way. What did we do? Drop the ta, stress the ta. Is this complete idram or incomplete? Complete. Look at the noon and the ra. Do the noon and the ra come from the same makhraj? No, they don't. And this is an example of the idram mutaqarib. We'll come back to it in, in, when we talk about nakhlukkum. So, here we make complete idram. Now, here in this line, he is telling you, Rahimahullah, Imam Ibn al-Jazari, when you have itbaq letter, when you have itbaq letter, Followed by another letter. They come from the same makhraj, which is particularly the ta. When you have ta with sukun, followed by ta, as in ahattu, as and in basatta, and as in farrattum, and as in farrattu, these four words only in the whole Quran that has ta with sukun, followed by ta with haraka. He's telling you here, bayin al itbaq. Make the atbaq clear. What does that mean? Who can conclude from this? Al atbaq is an attribute of what letter? Ta. And he's telling you, clarify the atbaq of the ta here. What do you understand from this? So you don't merge the ta completely. Right? You don't merge the ta completely. But you have to keep its atbaq. So the sound should be confined. Right? And this is why uh, this is idram naqis. Incomplete idram. Now, 
how do we apply this idram? How do you apply idram naqis? He told you, clarify the itbaq. This means what will be left of the sifat, of the attributes of the ta is only the atba. What else do we have for the ta? <coughs> Istila. What else? Qalqala. We skip the qalqala. So we don't say ahato to ahato. No. He's telling you don't keep the qalqala. He's telling you keep what? Clarify what? Itba. Just this means the sound of the ta should be confined between the tongue and the roof. You say up, up, without qalqala. Then what do you do? Up, to, a help, to. Then you go to the ta right away. So you skip the qalqala and you you keep the, the itba like this. A help. Now what am I doing? A help. What is this sifa? Itba. A help. Two. Tamam. Try. A help. Two. A help. Two. Try. All together. Basalt ta. Basalt ta. I'm trying to slow it down so that you get basalt ta. So as if you're gonna say ta, but you say ta. Huh? You prepare to say ta, but you say ta. You start with ta and you end with ta. Huh? Basalt ta. Now faster. Basalt ta. So why you don't say we merge completely? Why you don't make complete idram? Basalt ta. Isn't it easier? It's easier, but it doesn't sound right. Why we don't do this? Because you took away the ta. Very. Clear reason why we don't do complete idram here. Because the ta is, has two strength attributes, two attributes of strength. It has istila and it has itba. So it doesn't accept to come under the ta completely. While the ta, yes, it accepts to come under the ta completely. You say qalat. No ta at all. Qala ta'ifah. But the ta doesn't accept to come under the ta completely, no. Because it has two attributes that are strong. Istila and itbaq. Tamam? So, we read it this way. The other word we have in the Quran is farratum. Say, farratum. 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 Tum. The last word in Surah Sayyidina, uh, in Surah Zumar, I mean, Farwatu. 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 And Surah Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, Farwatu. Is that clear, Shabab? Yes. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Before we move to Nakhlukkum, my last question here. Let me see who's uh, who, who who's going to get this uh, professional uh, point here. What's making what's making the uh, what's happening? What's taking place in the mouth? When we make the idram naqis, when we apply the incomplete idram, what happens in the mouth? Who can explain to me? When we say a help to, it's very easy. You place but the tongue. Just think. What do we do? You place the tongue in the position of the. Of, of the ta, okay, a help, then. And, and then you change it uh, on immediately to the. You to change the it immediately to the ta. That's the general description. I want the detailed description. What happens? The tongue, the goes tongue down. lowers. Yeah. What part of the tongue goes down? The middle side. The, the middle? The back. The back. What about the front part of the tongue? It stays the same. It remains the same. Why? Because Because the ta and the ta they come from the same place. See how it goes. A hot 
I'm gonna show you now in the video. Uh -huh. I hop. This is the top, right? I uh -huh. hop. Two. See what will happen. Two. I uh hop. -huh. Two. Two. So only the the back part of the tongue is going down. So do we? What do we do? Do we connect up? Then we move to the ta again, or we connect? Then disconnect. We start with ta, end with ta. We start with ta, we end with ta, right? With يعني they say يرتفع المخرج ارتفاع واحد. Okay. Up two. I say a hop two. I don't say a hop two. You see the difference? So you connect, then you disconnect. One time, one time connection, then one time disconnection. Start with ta, finish with ta. See this video by Sheikh Ayman. Uh, may Allah reward him. Very, very nice video, professional video. Shows you exactly how. It shows you exactly how, what happens in the mouth. Now I want you to focus on the front part of the tongue. Focus on the front part. Focus on the front part. A hop to a hop to what do you notice? The front part stays the same. The front part remaining the same, right? Did you notice? Now look at the previous part. Now this is the ta, huh? This is ta. Look what will happen when we when we say ta. A hop to. A hop to. Tama. What what letter is this? Ta. Ta. Right. That see the back part. Now see the ta. This is the ta. You see. A hop. Now see when you say the ta, just the back part will go down. Tamam, shabab. Subhanallah, very, uh, mashallah, professional video. May Allah reward Sheikh Ayman Swed and, and the artist who worked with him, mashallah. Taysir uh, al-Arand. May Allah reward them both. So, uh, this is what happens in the mouth. We, the front part is the same, just the back part goes down. Uh, to to pronounce the the ta. Any question on this before we move on to the last part? Okay, let's read what we explained very quickly. Who can read and give me some rest? Sheikh. Yalla. The battery is almost dead. How much? How many? How many minutes? Four minutes. Yalla, can yalla read ya read for us ya. Kinan. Kinan. Forty six. Clarify the itbab of the ta and ahfat with basad ed. And the difference in pronouncing nakhlukum. Nakhlukum? Nakhlukum has occurred. Okay. So here we should apply itbab with a genus. Much it has not. Itbab. 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 متجانس 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 from outside, from outside, from outside. Assimilation of one letter into another in such a manner that it is read as when Mushad, Mushad, the first letter, the second letter, the second letter, the second letter. Okay. 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 This is an explanation of what we mentioned. Okay. قال الطائفة إدغام ناقص 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 here we should clarify the itbaq. This means we do not merge the ta into the ta because the ta is strong. Why? Due to its istila and itbaq. This is idram mutajanis naqis. We apply it by keeping the itbaq of the ta, skipping the itqalqala, and then pronouncing ta. How? 
by disconnecting the front part of the tongue from the roof of the mouth and lowering the back part of the tongue, right? I don't think there's more details than, than this. Uh, now, let's finish with the last word, which is uh, And here we have compare, we said if we have ta, then ta, do we merge the ta completely or no? No. <laughs> yes. We, why? Because the ta is not strong. Wait, ta right? and ta? Yeah, we, so oh. we say here, we mentioned qala ta'ifa, right? Fa'amana ta'ifa, right? Now, last point is nakhlukkum. He said, rahimahullah, walkhulfu bi nakhlukkum waqa. Walkhulfu bi nakhlukkum waqa. Means the difference in nakhlukkum has occurred. What does that mean? The difference in nakhlukkum. What does that mean? What does that mean? The cameraman should be the most awake. <laughs> well, uh, what does that mean? Means the difference in pronouncing the word نَخْلُكُمْ waqa, Right? Now, let me ask you, what, what two letters are we talking about here? Qaf and Kaf. Do they come from the same makhraj? Yes. Do the Qaf and the Kaf come from the same makhraj? No. no, no, no. no. How the how how does the qaf come? From the back part. We explained in the makharij. Yeah. The qaf is from the back part of the tongue, and you touch what? The roof of the mouth. You yeah. touch what? The soft palate. The soft palate. Aqo. You touch the soft palate with the back part of the tongue, but the kaf, you touch both. The, both soft palate and hard palate with the back part. Ak. Ek. So, are they mutamathilain? Are they from the same letters? No. no. Are they mutajani same from no. the same makhraj? No. No. Mutaqaribin. Are they mutaqaribain from yes. neighboring makharij? Yes. yes. They come from neighboring makharij, from close makharij. Now, is the first letter sakin? We said the first letter should be sakin, right? It is nakhluqu. Nakhluqu kum, right? Now, how do we apply the idgham here? Do we apply idgham? Yes. The Qurra agreed we're going to apply idgham here. How? Here they differ. The vast majority of Qurra, they said we make complete idgham. We make complete idgham. How? Tell me, you tell me. By dropping oh. the... Dropping the Qaf completely and stressing the... Okay. So how do you read it? Nakhlukum. <laughs> Try. Nakh. <laughs> say nakh. Nakh. Lu. 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 Kum. Kum. This is very important so that you get it right. You don't say nakh. Lu. Kum. Lu. Kum. No. Lu. Then you bring back normal for the first calf which has sukun. Lu. Kum. Nakh. Nakh. Lu. Try. So you need to use the mirror. If you don't use, pass this, the white one, please. If you don't use Sheikh mirror, okay, as Sheikh Ayman Sweet says, may Allah reward him, you really, you will not reach the perfection, inshallah. Uh, so you see how you round with the dhamma nakh lu then with the first cap you bring it normal lu kum dhamma nakh lu kum so you read it this way alam nakh lu kum mim ma in maheen surat mursalat this is the only word in the quran that has this rule alam nakh Alam nakh lukum Alam nakh luk And make the kha heavy Nakh lukum Tamam? Now what is the other way? Who can tell me the other way? Incomplete idgham How? Yalla, who can tell me how we apply it? By Incomplete idgham Oh, by taking For example, qaf and kaf 
We keep only the istila of the qaf and we skip its qalqala like this and we start with qaf we end with kaf as if we we prepare to pronounce qaf but we pronounce what kaf like this nakh ha nakh nakh luk kum one more time nakh luk kum but this way this way is not in any of hafiz narrations or asanid so for us we only have one option what is it drop complete idgham you drop the qaf completely you read it like this nakh luk kum nakh luk kum there are only two qurra of the great <coughs> previous imams in the 4th and 5th century uh, but in half narrations whether through shatibiyah way or tayyibah way in all of them we have only one way which is the complete idgham I think uh, by this we uh, finish this line. Now, last question: Why, why in basatta, why we cannot have complete idgham like here nakhlukum? Because the ta is because uh, the ta is has two attributes of strength: istila and mutbaq. The qaf has only istila; it is munfatih. It's not mutbaq letter, so it accepts to. Be merged completely into the in the word kaf. the word abattum. Abattum, very good example. Abattum. Abattum. What do we have in abattum? Of course, we will come back to these types of idram, mutajamis and mutaqarib and mutamathil. We will explain them in this section in the coming verses. But for your question, abattum. What do we have? We have dar and ta. Dar with sukun and ta, right? Yeah. Uh, good that you reminded me in this. In the Quran, if you look at the word Nakhlukkum in Surah Al-Mursalat, you find that they did not put Sukun on the Qaf and they put Shadda on the Kaf. So the word Nakhlukkum, they wrote it like this. No Shadda here, no Sukun on the Qaf, but they put Shadda on the Kaf, like this, Nakhlukkum. They're telling you that you drop the Qaf. And in the Tajweed Mus'haf, I think, the color Tajweed Mus'haf, they make the Qaf gray, I think. Right, check, check please, uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman. Uh, they made the qaf gray, I think. So, abattum, do the dal and the ta come from the same makhraj? Yes. Yeah. So, this is idram muta janis. Is the dal sakina? Yes. This is why they drop the dal completely. So, we don't say abattum. We don't say abattum. We say abattum. Right? ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم. The dal is dropped completely. We make complete idgham. عبدتم, right? Also here they drop the sukun. They stress the ta, right, Sheikh? So here عبدتم. Completely, we drop it completely. Complete idgham. And we'll come back to this in details, inshallah, in the coming, in the coming lines. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Inshallah, next time we will take the 47th uh, line. So today we got two lines. وحرف الاستعلاء فخم وخصصا لطباق أقوى نحو قال والعصا. Then what? وبين الإطباق من أحط مع بسط والخلف بنخلكم وقع. How many lines we got in this section about the lambs? Two. Three we got so far. Who remembers the first one? وفخم اللام باسم الله عن فتح نوضا منك عبد الله and we reviewed it today right the second line is وحرف الاستعلاء فخم وخصصا لطباق أقوى نحو قال والعصا and third one وبين الإطباق من أحط مع بسط والخلف بنخلكم وقع صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين